Today I'll be reviewing the Tesla to J1772 adapter from EVBase. This adapter is rated for 250 volts AC at 60 amps. It's IP65 rated, which means it's dust tight and water resistant, and I'm also told that it is UL listed. The adapter also comes with this nice microfiber carrying case. Alright, let's check tolerances on this thing using the official J1772 to Tesla NAX adapter. That clicks in nicely, is quite secure and firm. Uh, not a lot of space there, which is good to see. Uh, the latch is a very satisfying click and removes quite easily there. Now let's check the female side of the EV base adapter with male port on the adapter for the Tesla. Plug that in. This one doesn't go in as easily, so I found that you have to press this red lever down and then insert the Tesla. It is secure. Uh, you pull it, it doesn't want to move. In order to release the Tesla NAX part of it, you have to press that red lever and free it that way. One other thing to note, this release mechanism does not have a hole in it. Uh, if they had included a hole, you might be able to lock the cord to the adapter, which might be nice for a home charging situation if you don't want this getting stolen, but um, it's nice that they have the latching adapter, gives a little bit more peace of mind that way. And that's pretty much it. We'll take it on the road and test it out at some Tesla Level 2 charging equipment. I took the 2023 Chevy Bolt EUV to a Holiday Inn that had a Tesla destination charger. I plugged in the EV base adapter into the Tesla NAX connector that was connected to the destination charger. Open the door on the bolt and simply plug in. After about a five second handshake between the car and the charger, the charge started. You can see that the car is charging at 10 kilowatts. So that's at the full 48 amps at 208 volts. Looks like the charger and the adapter is working great. We'll have a full battery here by 1 p.m. So two hours to a full battery, currently at 80%. All right, now let's see how we disconnect this. Uh, we disconnect it with the Tesla button. Looks like nothing happens. I press the button on the Tesla connector Nothing happens, so uh, will be a matter of pressing it there. Heard the contactor there. Um, we're not currently pulling any power anymore. And then just simply lift out. And then it'll be a matter of pressing this and then pulling out the Tesla plug from there. So now I'm going to try it again. We'll plug in the adapter first and then plug in the Tesla NAX. Again, there's that red. It's handshaking. And there we go. So we all hang out for a few minutes just to make sure that the charge doesn't get interrupted for some reason, but uh, Overall, very seamless experience. It's nice having the ability to charge at these Tesla destination chargers. I know there have been uh, several occasions where I've wanted to use a Tesla charger with my old Bolt and wasn't able to because I didn't have an adapter. So thank you EVBase for sending me this and for the opportunity to try it out. Again, my only concerns with the product are the fact that it's rated at 60 amps and the J1772 standard supports up to 80. So. There may be occasions with more powerful charging vehicles like the F-150 Lightning where uh, if you use an adapter like this and you try to pull 80 amps through that connector, you're going to end up uh, overcurrenting it and using put, pushing more power through it than it's designed to carry. So that could land you in a safety situation, um, burn up the adapter, burn up contacts on either the car side or the plug side. So. Um, that's really the only pause I have with this particular product. Everything else seems pretty solid. The good plastic materials are chosen. If you're interested in this, check out the link in the description for 15% off. And uh, thanks for watching. All right, bonus content. I couldn't help myself. After I noticed there were some holes with screws in them, I decided I wanted to take this thing apart. So I did. And we'll just separate.
And there's what it looks like inside. So really quite simple. Uh, there's some 20 gauge wire here that's going to a switch. This is the switch that gets depressed when squeezing this trigger to unplug and unlatch the adapter from the car. Um, there's also an eight gauge ground wire. I'm not quite sure what the gauge is here, but there is some UL listed thermoplastic insulated wiring. You can see the code on there. Um, I'm hoping this is six gauge wire, given the fact that this is rated at 60 amps. So uh, if this was eight gauge as was the ground wire, so if this is the same gauge as the ground wire, um, the wires would be undersized for the 60 amp application, but I'm, I'm pretty sure these look like six, six gauge wires. So uh, according to the NEC with the, the right insulation, you could theoretically pull up to 75 amps through there, but I'm still a little bit concerned that the adapter is not rated for 80 amps. Um, in the event you try to plug in a Hummer, an F-150 Lightning, some Tesla Model S's. If you try to pull that 19.2 kilowatts through this adapter, you might be uh, looking at a component in here failing. Um, now the box does say there is over voltage and under voltage protection, um, leakage protection, short circuit protection, overcurrent protection, temperature control protection. I don't see any of that present in here. Um, now there are more screws. There's a screw for the J1772 side of the house and also one for the Tesla NAC side. But um, unless they're hiding some circuitry in here, uh, maybe on the control pilot or proximity pilot pins, I, I don't see any of that aforementioned protection. And so uh, all in all, uh, very bare bones, but uh, effective. It looks like the seals here that they're using for that IP65 rating are adequate. Um, the, the unit seemed nicely sealed when I pulled it apart. So now it'll just be a matter of making sure I get my um, proximity pilot switch wires tucked in and uh, get this part fastened back onto the adapter.